Throughout the lifetime of Minecraft, creative builders have always used pathways to bring a landscape to life. Pathways are what connect the structures we have worked so hard on together and add to the overall story and atmosphere. Unfortunately, there are many common mistakes that builders still make whilst building pathways. That being said, my name is System Z, and these are my five tips for pathways in Minecraft. For this first tip, I'd like to point out that this is one of the biggest mistakes people make whilst coming up with a pathway design. The overall color and block palette is probably the most important part of any pathway. Without a good one, your path won't stand out amongst others and will be more of a visual nuisance than anything. Color in Minecraft deserves its own video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about why things work better than others. For now, I'll say that the main process going into choosing the correct blocks for your palette goes into choosing about three to four blocks, all similar in color, and in some cases texture. For example, let's say that you were in need of a simple dirt path. You could easily just lay down dirt blocks and call it a day, but where's the fun in that? Adding blocks like coarse dirt, path blocks, and even brown stained clay adds so much to the life and story to your path. These are only a few of the possibilities. I really recommend exploring different colors and just trying to figure out what works best for you. Now that you've got a nice color palette, it's time to work out the shape of the pathway. Before we continue, let me explain exactly what I mean by the shape of the pathway. Whenever you are first introduced to a new build in Minecraft, such as a small town or even a big city, one of the first things you are going to notice is the overall width and length of the pathway or road. Length isn't necessarily something I can explain properly with this tip, but I'll make sure to return to it later on in this video. That leaves us only with width. The distance between each side of the pathway is going to be really important for balance and atmosphere in a build. For example, if you were walking around a small town with just a few different houses and shops that were maybe about 7 to 9 blocks tall, but walking on pathways that stretch out to like 6 to 7 blocks across, you'd immediately notice the imbalance. Typically, in these cases, it'll appear to the player that you were too lazy to build a proper path and just wanted to fill in the space, making your build much less interesting. The same goes for a big city with very slim roads. While there is no perfect width of a pathway, I personally had no problem with staying in between about the 3-5 to five block range. That's always worked for me anyways. Next up, we have depth. While you can get away without adding a general depth to your pathway, it is still a very useful thing to know and use when needed. Now, you may be thinking that you don't have to worry about depth and that you've always had no trouble adding this to your pathways. Unfortunately, most people still have trouble with this, despite thinking otherwise. Depth is best described in pathways as adding stairs, buttons, and other blocks or items that add a small height difference throughout your pathway. Chances are you have seen quite a few different cases of this and may have even thought to yourself about how ugly it made a path look. That's just a thing though. Too much depth can be a problem. In moderation, however, it can really add a story to your build. For example, adding a stone button here and there simulates rocks that have been kicked around. Carpets and path blocks add a very small height difference that makes the path look a bit aged and trampled on. Stairs and half slabs, however, are usually bad in most cases. Unless you were looking to build an intricate pathway for some royal palace, I'd personally recommend avoiding them. Now that you've got your pathway planned out, it's time to start thinking about atmosphere. With every build in Minecraft, there is going to be an atmosphere, whether it's good or bad. It is what defines the story and sets a scene. The most common habit with builders in terms of atmosphere is to add things like lanterns and bushes along pathways using torches and leaves. While this is a good practice, you don't have to stop there. Adding bridges, tunnels, trees, and more alongside these lanterns and bushes can really help set the scene for the player. Similar to depth, this can certainly be overdone, so be careful with your placement. And now this brings us to the final tip for this video, placement. As I mentioned earlier, shape, including width and length, is important. And seeing as I've already talked about width, I'd like to consider length being included in placement. Placement with pathways includes shapes, 
curves, hills, and more. It is very important that you avoid having just a straight pathway and instead have your path follow the curvature and flow of the landscape. To bring this video to a close, I'm going to leave you with this quick example. If you look at the difference between a generated village and a user-built town, you can really see how much a creative, atmospheric path can have on the scene. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment down below, and any suggestions you have leave down below as well. My name has been SystemZ, this has been 5 Tips for Pathways in Minecraft, thanks for watching.